How's it going Eliminators? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about fuel filters, which ones you should use and why. And near the end of the video, we'll even cut some apart so you guys can see what is inside of them. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in front of me on the workbench today, I have six fuel filters that I use on a wide range of equipment. These are filters that you're generally going to see on riding lawnmowers and outdoor power equipment. Now we're going to start things off with the smallest fuel filter in regards to its overall shape and size. And we'll be starting from the top left, working our way down and across until we get to the overall largest fuel filter that I have in my inventory. And just to point out, the numbers that you see at the top of these little notes are the Stens part numbers. I got all of these fuel filters from Stens. So at any time, you guys can go online and check these products out at Stens.com for the US version or StensCanada.ca for the Canadian version. So starting off with the red plastic fuel filter you see here. This is a fuel filter that you're generally going to see on a lot of Craftsman riding lawnmowers with Briggs & Stratton engines because this is a Briggs & Stratton part, but the one that you see in front of you is a Stens replacement. Now, unlike some of the other fuel filters that we're going to get to in a moment, this fuel filter has a metal screen inside of it. Now it might be tough to see, but I've zoomed in the best that I can to show you guys there is a metal screen inside of there. And we're going to be discussing what type of stuff that's gonna filter out. All of these filters that you see in front of you are measured in what's known as a micron. So what is a micron? Well, it is a metric measurement that equals one millionth of a meter. So we're talking incredibly small particles here. Now to help you guys get a reference of exactly how small the particles we're talking about here, if you started out at 150 microns here, which is going to be that red filter that I just showed you, that has a measurement of approximately six thousandths of an inch. Now I do have my set of feeler gauges here. These have a bunch of different thicknesses. You commonly see me use those to adjust the tolerances of valves. So we're gonna use that in a moment to further explain exactly what kind of sizes we're talking about. Anything that's smaller than that will go through that little screen. But at six thousandths of an inch, it might be difficult to see. That is a 0 .006 thousands of an inch right there. This is what I commonly use to adjust exhaust valves. And you guys can see if I turn this on its side, like we're talking about relatively thin material there, right? And as you guys can see, 150 microns, 10 microns, we're going to go through these and uh, we're going to get down to a pretty small size. Coming up next, we have the white fuel filter here. Same thing as this one, it has a metal screen inside of it. However, that metal screen, instead of filtering at 150 microns, it now filters out 75 micron particles. Now, this fuel filter is generally used on engines that are equipped with a fuel pump. So, the rule of thumb is if it has a fuel pump, you can run one of these white filters. If it is what is known as gravity fed, you're supposed to use the red fuel filters. Now me personally, when working on outdoor power equipment, that is what's known as gravity fed. So you're gonna have a fuel tank with a fuel line going directly to the carburetor and gravity is going to push that fuel down. I have never really had a problem with running one of these white fuel filters on a gravity fed system or basically vice versa. And going back to our chart here, at 75 microns, you're filtering out particles at three thousandths of an inch or larger. Anything smaller than that is going to pass right through. Now at three thousandths of an inch, you guys can see it right there, 0 0.003. We're already half the size of what we would normally adjust an exhaust valve to, and we're one thousandths of an inch under what I would normally adjust an intake valve to. Now turning this one on its side, you guys are gonna start to see that we are getting to incredibly small tolerances here. Like you guys can barely see that on screen. So here's where we're going to get into a little bit of changes regarding the filter. We're now going from a metal screen filter to a paper element inside of here that is going to filter out debris. You're also going to notice this arrow designating which side the fuel tank should be hooked up to and which side the carburetor should be hooked up to. So unlike the metal screen filters there, which are generally non-directional, these filters are going to be flowing from the right side open chamber through the filter to the carburetor on the left side there. 
and compared to the opaque, non-see-through plastic of the metal screen filters, we now have clear plastic that allows you to clearly see any debris and sediment that forms inside of this filter. Now, generally speaking, when you're starting to use paper filters, ideally you want to be using them on an engine that has a fuel pump. That's going to assist the fuel in flowing, which will allow the fuel to pass through that paper filter easily, getting it to your carburetor and not creating a fuel starvation issue. However, if you guys are regulars here on my channel, you will know that I commonly use these filters right here. That is going to be the Stenz 120-562 filter. It is a Tecumseh fuel filter replacement, and I absolutely love using these because of the size. They are much shorter, so when you start using these paper filter elements, obviously you guys are gonna see that the size starts to increase because in order to filter, a smaller micron particle, you're gonna to have to add a larger element that can filter smaller debris. So size is definitely going to come into play when uh, you're trying to fit this onto a mower. Obviously, you guys can see there's gonna be a big difference right there. Something like this, you can fit pretty much anywhere, right? You're gonna cut the fuel line, pull it apart, put this in, and it really doesn't take up all that much space. Whereas using a filter like this, it's much longer, so you're gonna to have to cut your fuel line back shorter to fit this in and sometimes you may just not have the room. And going back to the flow, if you guys are regulars on my channel, you'll know that I recently used this on a generator. Now, the generator had a very large fuel tank at the top with a line that came nearly straight down and went to the carburetor. But one of the things you're gonna have to understand is how fluid works and how pressure works. So I just have a jar here filled with some old used fuel that we pulled out of a lawnmower. So just like diving, if you dive to a deeper depth, you're going to have more pressure on the diver's body. And this not only applies to a diver, but it also applies to a fuel tank that's filled with fuel. Now to help explain this, just imagine that this glass jar was actually made out of plastic. And imagine that we drilled a hole down at the bottom here and then drilled a hole near the top of the fluid. You would see the fluid coming out of the bottom hole at a much faster rate than you would at the top, and that's because there's more pressure at the bottom. So I generally find that using these larger paper fuel filters works just fine on outdoor power equipment that has a larger fuel tank with more capacity. So the more fuel you can put in there, the greater the pressure will be at the bottom of the tank, which will increase the amount of flow through this paper filter. And I know that from my own experience because I have tried to use some of these larger paper filters on some lawnmowers and unfortunately it just didn't have enough flow going through that paper filter and I ended up with what was known as a fuel starvation issue. The lawnmower essentially couldn't get enough fuel and once we changed over to one of these metal screen filters, the engine ran perfectly fine. Now moving on from the 120 562 Tecumseh Stenz fuel filter replacement that filters at 30 microns. We're going to be moving down to the 12436. That is a Kohler replacement. Now this one filters at 25 microns, five microns smaller than the Tecumseh one, but it works in the same way. This filter has a clear plastic housing. So just like the Tecumseh one, you guys are going to be able to see all the debris and sediment that gets into that chamber and also all the gunk that gets built up on your paper element. Now, one of the added benefits of using this style of fuel filter is going to be the ends. You're gonna notice that they have some different sizes on there, which is super useful because not all outdoor power equipment have the same inside diameter of fuel line. So that's going to allow you to run it on a much smaller fuel line if you have one on your equipment, but you are going to have to cut it back a little bit further to extend it to that smaller tip. Now at a size of 25 microns, we're filtering out particles that are incredibly small. You can see here that we don't have 25 microns written down, but we do have 50, which is a size of two thousandths of an inch. So if we take that 50 and divide it by two, at a size of 25 microns, we're filtering out particles that are one thousandth of an inch in size. That's incredibly small. And to do my feeler gauge comparison here, at 25 microns, again, that's one thousandth of an inch. I don't even have a feeler gauge that goes down to that size. You guys can see here 0 0.0015. So that's gonna be one and a half thousandths of an inch. And again, if I put this up on screen, 
you guys, it, it won't even focus on it. That's, that's how thin that one is. So again, that's my smallest feeler gauge there. I've never used it. And that just goes to show you what that filters through. So the 055-113 is going to be a Kohler OEM fuel filter. You guys can see it there right in the Kohler bag. Still going to be a directional fuel filter. So from the fuel tank out to the carburetor. However, unlike these smaller fuel filters you see here, you guys can see that we're now starting to get into a much larger element. Now, generally speaking, I don't ever use these on engines that are single cylinder. Filters like this are going to be used mainly on V-twin engines that are about 20 horsepower or higher. Unfortunately though, unlike these fuel filters here that have the clear housings, you guys are gonna notice that this one, you can't really see through it. So what I tend to do is shine a light in behind them to try to see if there's any debris inside of that fuel filter and it will help you determine whether or not that fuel filter needs to be replaced. Now, like I said, much bigger element. With this filter, you can filter out particles at 15 microns. So coming back over to our chart here, you're gonna see 15 microns, that's going to be 0 0.0006 of an inch, and that's pronounced as six ten thousandths of an inch. Again, we're filtering out incredibly small particles. Now to help put that into perspective, you guys can see here human hair, 17 to approximately 180 microns. So at a size of 15 microns, or six ten thousandths of an inch, you're getting down to about the smallest human hair possible. Now, before we move on from this one down to this one here, this is the largest yet the smallest filtering filter that I have. I wanted to talk about another one of these filters. Now, this is the Stens equivalent of Kohler's filter. However, the 12450 filters approximately seven to 11 microns, which is going to essentially filter out smaller particles than this much larger one would. So if you find yourself in the position where you're trying to filter out very fine debris like this one does, but you just don't have the room for a large element like that, you can get the Stens 120-450. It's going to be similar in size to this one here, yet you'll filter out fine debris like the larger one. And coming down to the largest fuel filter that I have, yet, as I mentioned, the one that filters out the smallest particles, you guys can see the Stens 120-914 filters out at a particle size of 10 microns, still a directional fuel filter. Yeah, you guys can see this one has a metal construction. You absolutely cannot see inside of it to see whether or not there is debris in there. So you're just gonna have to change this out frequently. And like I said, when it comes to filtering out smaller particle sizes, we're now starting to get into an even larger element. So if we compare this one here to the smaller Kohler filter, you guys are gonna notice it's almost twice as big, believe it or not, but we've only dropped about five microns. Now to help put 10 microns into perspective, we're gonna go back to my chart here and we've written down that spider web silk ranges anywhere from three to eight microns. Again, we're talking about incredibly small particles here. So it may be hard to believe, but an individual strand of spider web silk would flow right through that filter. But spider silk when woven into a web is going to be much thicker and much larger. Now to put all of these fuel filters into perspective, we can actually compare it to something like a water filter. So a water filter cartridge that you would see on like a Brita filter, you know, one of these zero water, whatever it is that you guys are gonna be buying, they filter out at 0.2 microns. That's gonna remove bacteria and a lot more crap that's in your water that could be harmful to you if you drank it. Now 0.2 microns is incredibly small. I don't think there's any fuel filter on the market that's going to filter out stuff that's that fine. And last but not least, like I said, I will be cutting some of these fuel filters open so that you guys can see exactly what's inside of them. However, I won't be cutting open my fuel filters because they're brand new. I don't wanna be wasting stuff if I don't have to. So I went into my scrap bin, that was a used one, but all these extra ones that you see in front of us are used filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to cut them open and we'll have a look at what's inside. So to start things off, we have the Stens 12188 Briggs filter that filters out 150 microns using the metal screen. Now this is a used one that I pulled off of a mower. Obviously you guys can see there's not too much crap that's inside of there. However, 
you really can't tell with these ones if you got gunk in them or not because if you just simply look down the hole and it appears to be you know clean enough you may not be getting an accurate representation of all the sediment that's fallen to the bottom edge off to the sides there so we pretty much just go ahead and replace these while we're doing a service but because of the size of the screen and they only filter out at 150 microns i've found that some of the pieces of the dead bugs will kind of go through your fuel system and get into your carburetor and even a strand of grass and lawn debris will pass through that trust me i know from experience now moving on to the 120014 that filters at half the rate at about 75 microns. Again, you guys can see just like the red one, the white one here filters with a metal screen. However, that metal screen is going to filter out much finer debris. You guys can see there is going to be some stuff inside of there, right? And I tried to do my best to cut these open without losing any of the gunk that was in them. But these were incredibly difficult to open up. I couldn't do it with just an X-Acto knife and a pair of pliers. So I had to take the grinder to them. So moving on from the metal screen fuel filters to now the paper filters. I didn't cut that one open. I only cut this one open because I had a used one. This is the 12436 Stens Kohler fuel filter replacement that filters out at 25 microns. Going back to these, I generally don't use these anymore because they don't work as good as the paper ones do. And I'm gonna show you proof of that. So what I did here was just cut off the one end that goes back to the fuel tank. And I'm gonna show you guys all the stuff. I didn't put that in there, but this is all the stuff that was in this fuel filter when I took it off of a customer's machine. And we're gonna try our best to dump this stuff out here. And you guys are gonna see what kind of stuff I'm talking about here. Like there's a little bit of everything by the looks of it. This is almost something like you'd sweep up on your shop floor. And this came out of someone's fuel tank, right? So inside of here, it might be hard to tell, but it even looks like there's a bunch of dog hair in there. So not only does it filter out fine debris that would most likely pass through the red Briggs or Stens filter up there, but we're also getting what looks to be like either human hair or dog hair, which is pretty gross. Hopefully you guys can see that, but it just goes to show you that a paper filter at about 25 microns does a way better job than these little metal screen ones. And this is why I use these as much as I can, whether it be the 12436 or the 12562 paper filter. They're just superior. And again, you know, if you guys are changing these out every year, maybe even twice a year, depending on how much you're running your equipment, it's definitely going to save you from an expensive carb clean and rebuild because you're preventing all of this stuff from going into your carburetor. And last but not least, we have the Kohler 055-113 fuel filter here. So I went ahead and just completely mangled the end of this. And then I also had to grab a hold of that with a pair of pliers to pull out the element. And I'm just gonna try to lay this down best I can for you guys. So what we're gonna see here is we have still a paper element, but it has these metal caps. So the fuel comes in from your fuel tank, hits this, and then it kind of disperses around your paper filter. And then it goes through the paper filter. And then this seals up against the inside of that. You guys can see they have a little fitting built up there. So that fuel goes from the inside of this element or cartridge and then out towards your carburetor. Now, if you guys are regulars here at Eliminator Performance, you may remember that I did a video on a Massey Ferguson. This fuel filter actually came off of that Massey Ferguson. I just serviced it again this summer. This is going to be a prime example of a customer that makes sure her jerry can or her fuel can is clean compared to a customer that just dumps whatever they have in that jerry can into their fuel tank on their outdoor power equipment. So as you guys could imagine, because I service that customer's riding lawnmower each and every single year, I do the air filter as well as the fuel filter. That means that both the air and the fuel that are going into the carburetor are going to be clean. And 
Like you guys probably guessed, no, I have never had to work on her carburetor to do a carb clean and or rebuild. It is not clogged up and that is because you're preventing debris from going into it in the first place. So for the relatively low cost that fuel filters are going to set you back, go ahead and change them annually. Whether it's in the spring at the beginning of the season or in the fall time at the end of the season, you wanna be servicing your outdoor power equipment regularly. Now, because I may be going through a few of these every day, I go ahead and buy these from Stens in bulk packages to save myself a little bit of money. But like I said, fuel filters are relatively inexpensive. You can pick them up on Amazon. A lot of times you're gonna get prime shipping. Go ahead and grab yourself an air filter as well while you're at it. And you shouldn't have any problems with your lawnmower starting, especially if you're using some ethanol free fuel, you're doing regular maintenance. You're not gonna have to take your machine in when you turn your engine over and it just won't start because it's all clogged up. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Tried to be as in-depth as I could about these fuel filters, include some interesting information as well as cut a few of them open to let you guys see what's inside of them. With that being said though, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.